In this lesson, we will review the formation of the carpal tunnel and look at some of the key structures that cross the carpal tunnel. In order to understand the carpal tunnel, let's start by looking at the forearm, wrist, and hand area in its anatomical position. And we will now rotate it around like this and then look at a very peculiar view like this. And if you take a section, a transverse section at this level in this vantage point, you end up with an image that looks like this. Right hand with the carpal tunnel in cross section. The thumb or the, uh, the radial side is over here. This is the radial side. And then this is the medial side over here or the ulnar side. So this is the carpal tunnel. And we will look at a very simple depiction of this uh, in a line drawing in order to really understand some of the anatomy. So this uh, is the outline of the carpal bones that form the floor and the side walls of this tunnel. And the first structure that we need to put in place, uh, so let's just get ourselves oriented again. These are the carpal bones with medial and lateral side. And the first structure we will put in place is the flexor retinaculum. This is the structure that converts this trough into a tunnel. And there are the tendons of the FDS that will cross through as well as the tendons of the FDP. So a total of eight tendons, four of the FDS, and then these are the FDP. So eight tendons crossing through this very limited space, the carpal tunnel. There's yet another tendon the tendon, the individual tendon of the flexor pollicis longus, or FPL, which is crossing through that carpal tunnel as well uh, on its way from the forearm to the hand. There's one nerve that crosses along with all these tendons as well. Uh, but before we put that in place, let's look at the final tendon, which is the FCR, which is seen here, flexor carpi radialis. Classically and strictly speaking, this doesn't really cross through the carpal tunnel, but it is in very close relationship to the flexor retinaculum because the flexor retinaculum on its uh, more lateral side splits um, to uh, surround the FCR tendon. The nerve that crosses through the carpal tunnel is the median nerve, and it is situated in this region right here. So think of a situation where the volume of the tissues in this limited space is increased. For example, think of a situation where the tendon sheets around these tendons might be inflamed. There may be tenosynovitis, for example. In any such situation, the pressure within the carpal tunnel is increased, and the nerve is far more susceptible than the robust tendons. And therefore, the median nerve is compressed in such a situation, and it presents with what we call as carpal tunnel syndrome. And the features, the clinical features, would be exactly where the median nerve supplies, and it would be in the form of tingling or loss of sensation or perhaps weakness of the muscles that the median nerve supplies distal to the carpal tunnel. There are a couple of other uh, structures that we need to do, uh, we need to put in place in order to complete this story. The ulnar nerve, which is situated more on the medial side here, and note that it is not in the carpal tunnel. It actually is outside the carpal tunnel and is accompanied by the ulnar artery, which is also on the outside of the carpal tunnel. So if a patient presents uh, with ulnar nerve uh, symptoms, then that does not necessarily make it um, uh, support the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. Keep that, that's an important point to keep in mind. The final structure in this area is the radial artery, and the radial artery at this level has come to lie in this sort of a dorsal position over here. And uh, if you recollect, the radial artery was on the palmar side or the volar side at the wrist joint, but then it has an oblique course across the lateral side of the wrist joint and then comes to sit in this more dorsal um, orientation at this level of the carpal tunnel.